Welcome to episode five of the Inside the Program podcast. Today's guest is Joe White. Coach White is an assistant coach at Idaho State University. Welcome to the podcast, Coach White. I appreciate it, Coach Little. Appreciate your time. Glad to be here. My man, my man, got you. Thanks for being here as well. Let's jump right into it, Coach. Um, can you discuss your coaching journey, including your current position that you hold at Idaho State men's basketball? Yeah, no doubt. A um, little bit about me. I was born in San Diego, California. I was raised uh, outside of Eugene, Oregon, in a little town called Lost Creek. Uh, hard to find on the map. Um, from there, I was I uh, went to school at Pleasant Hill uh, from K through 11. Um, transferred, went to Thurston High School my senior year. Uh, from Thurston, graduated class of 08. Went to Southern Oregon, was there from 2009 to 2013. Um, played a, a year professionally for Club de la Salle in Guayaquil, Ecuador. Um, and then got into coaching in, in uh, 2014. I was at Tacoma Community College for three years um, from 14 to 17. And uh, then I got the assistant job at Lane Community College in Eugene, Oregon was there uh, 17, 18, and then was promoted to head coach uh, at the age of 28 from uh, 2018 to 19. Uh, in 2019, got the opportunity to join coach Looney here at Idaho State University. Uh, he got here May 1st of 2019. Uh, I got here May 13th of 2019. So uh, I've been here for, for all of it. Uh, from the get-go, uh, I've loved every bit of it. I've got to see, um, you know, what our, our program looks like uh, when it's really trending in the defending and rebounding at a really high level. Um, in year two, I, I think we uh, were the top defense in the in the conference and and uh, top ten in the country, and uh, with that led us to a, a top third finish in the, in the conference. So. Um, know what it looks like at a high level um you know we're excited to get back to it this year we think we have personnel that'll permit us to to play the way that we want to play and, and to achieve great things that's what's up coach um so at Idaho State you uh, also wear the hat as a recruiting coordinator what does that job actually entail yeah I mean the biggest thing is you know I, I've got to put us in position uh, through relationships that have been built and through identifying players uh, that helps our, our program get the players that we feel help us win. That's the biggest thing. So, you know, recruiting here, uh, we believe it's all, all relationship based. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to have stops at different areas and being from Southern California. Um, you know, my goal at, at the junior college level was really to lock down uh, Seattle to San Diego. Uh, so that's where I dedicated the vast majority of my time, everything along the I-5 corridor, um, you know, really pouring into and, and investing into those relationships. So, you know, we still really lean on those relationships uh, to help us, you know, be put in a position to get the players that we want here at Idaho State. Uh, Coach Looney has spent the vast majority of his career, in fact, all of it um, on the West Coast as well, um, really in the, in the same in the same area. So. Uh, he's been in Oregon at Eastern Oregon University. He was at Seattle Pacific and Seattle, Washington, um, and, and then was at Point Loma Nazarene University in San Diego, California. So uh, we have a lot of the same connections. Uh, I think that we try to use that to our to our benefit and try to double down on those relationships that we've uh, invested a lot of time into. Um, Coach Mutcherson, uh, you know, he brings – a larger net uh, to our recruiting pool uh, as somebody that's from Georgia, Augusta. Um, and then he's had different stops in different areas, such as Florida and uh, Utah and, and um, a couple other places. And now he's here with us. And then coach Furman, uh, coach Furman's from Indianapolis. Um, he He's uh, had his stops in, in California with coach Looney and then uh, came here in 2019. So, uh, we like our staff. We like the the uh, areas that we're able to cover, and we believe that uh, you know it's now led us to a recruiting class that's going to allow us to get back to the top third of the conference. 
Yeah, that's good stuff, Coach. Um, so how do you actually go about getting the ideal prospect to commit and become a Bengal? Like, um, without giving away too many, too many of your secrets, though, but, like, what are some things that you can share with us in terms of, like, what it is that you do to get that ideal prospect to say he committed to becoming a Bengal? For sure. Uh, again, I mean, there's there's really no secret sauce, in my opinion. I, I believe that uh, it's all about relationships and, and uh, hard work. Right. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it, um, like, like life. Um, but I would say, you know, the way I look at it, like the first thing we need to do as a program is we need to address our needs. Um, we then need to identify the recruits. Uh, we need to evaluate them. We then need to relationship build with them. Right. Getting to know them and their family and and um, everybody that's influential in their circle and and uh everything from, you know, teachers at, at their school to coaches to family members, um, et cetera, trainers, all, all of it. So, you know, we then need to figure out everything from academics, uh, their life situation, how they are as a teammate, uh, what their coachability is like, um, all of that. So I would say that all goes into relationship building. Uh, it could also just, you know, be uh, defined as recruiting, um, depending on how, how you look at it. Uh, from there, I, I think you need to get a second evaluation. I, I think it's always important to get multiple evaluations. Um, it, it's really easy to make a uh, decision when you, when you watch somebody once, um, catch them at their best, and, and then you end up with that player and, and, and find out that uh, they're unable to play at a level of consistency that, that meets your needs um, from a coaching standpoint, um, and vice versa. You, you can go watch a really good player, um, you know, one tournament, and he can have a bad tournament, and uh, you can rule them out. And uh, he can, you know, end up being a really good player, uh, consistent, efficient, um, long-term good player. So I think multiple evaluations is really smart. From there, man, goes back. You got to continue to relationship build, right? You got to be following up with them and, uh, and their people and, and making sure to include everybody that's going to be a part of the process. Uh, then after that, you got to look at, you know, what makes the most sense for your program in terms of, you know, bringing them on a visit, um, whether it's an unofficial, uh, or official visit, um, whether you want to bring them in the fall, whether you're looking to sign them late, um, you know, bring them in the winter, uh, you got to look at what's best for your program, uh, and what you're trying to sell. And, and, you know, if you have a really good football program, making sure that you bring them in the fall so they can catch homecoming or they can catch a, a rivalry game and, and, you know, be in front of, you know, 11,000 plus fans here at Idaho State in, in Holt Arena. Um, or, or, you know, if it makes more sense that, you know, we bring them in the winter, then we're, we're bringing them to Reed Gymnasium, which is, you know, here pictured with me in, in this interview um, and being able to, you know, provide them with what it's like to be in a, in a great atmosphere uh, that we're, we're building here at uh, Reed Gymnasium. And then after the visit, you, you know, you really rely on the relationship that you've built and, and the, uh, the people that you've included that are, are impactful and, and uh, have a voice. And then it's closing time, right? So you've got to, uh, you've got to close at your best and, and uh, you know, as, as some would say, you know, save your best for last type thing. So uh, I, I do believe, though, if, if the work's been put in and, and uh, it's a good fit and, and everything is uh, in place, uh, for, for what the student athletes looking for and what the staff's looking for. Um, you know, you, you start finding yourself in a position if you do the right work, uh, to get the players that you want to help you be successful. Yeah, no doubt coach. I definitely appreciate that share. Uh, one quick question before we move on to the ones that I sent through to you, when it comes to like, um, recruiting and, um, you know, kind of going out after players, is there a particular grassroots, uh, stage that you like to go recruit out of like do you go to the eybl the uh under armor uaa like uh, what, what which one do you kind of like particularly go to when you're recruiting players yeah you know I, I would say more than a commitment to a specific you know shoe affiliation uh we're committed to programs and, and to players okay. uh, and so for us you know we have to make sure that we're putting ourselves in position uh, to use our time and use our money wisely um, rather than just being out on the road at all times. You know, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're being efficient and, and that we have a detailed plan uh, every time that we hit the road, um, you know, making sure that our head coach knows where he's going, when he's got to be there, who he's got to watch, 
um, you know, what he's looking for, all of that type of stuff, all the way down to, um, you know, our, our entire staff of, of assistants, uh, making sure that everybody hits the road with a really detailed plan. So I would say, you know, for us, we've got to go where the players are um, and, and the players that, that we feel are going to help us win uh, typically are going to come from uh, the programs that we've built the best relationships with. And on top of that, uh, you know, whenever we find new players that, that fit what we're looking for, um, there's times where we're going to be at, at tournaments that are, you know, non shoe affiliated tournaments um and, and yes less coaches may be there but for us that's not what matters like what matters for us is does the player help us win and does the, the player help us you know move our, our program in, in the right direction and help us compete for a championship and eventually win a championship here at Idaho State definitely makes a lot of sense coach you have been proven and are known to be a winner wherever you go was it what is it about your mentality that breeds winning and helps players improve vertically? Like, what is it about your mentality and just, like, you know, your overall approach to the game? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, first things first, I, I've been very fortunate. I've been around really good coaches. Uh, I've also been around really good players. Um, and, and, you know, my, my belief is is it really is about the Jimmys and Joes more than the X's and O's. And, and so, you know, uh, to each their own in, in regards to that. But, um I believe this is a game about the players and, and as a player's coach, uh, you know, we've got to understand like that's, that's really what it's about. So for me, um, I, I would say in order, uh, first things first, we've got to con control what we can control. Uh, the number one thing in, in a program um, is culture. Okay. Uh, the, the next is, is players, right? Uh, the next is X's and O's and the next is, is player development. Um I feel like, you know, the mixture of those four things uh, are, are going to be, you know, the, the backboard um, and, and the spine, you know, the spinal cord, the, the strength and uh, what we rely on for uh, continued success throughout our career. Yeah, good stuff, Coach. Um, yesterday was the official start of practice for most college programs around the country. Did you guys practice yesterday? And if you did, what did that practice actually look like? Yeah, we did. You know, it, uh, it, it was, uh, it was a great practice. We were really excited about it. Um, you know, for myself, this is the start of year nine and, uh, the excitement's the exact same, uh, every single year. Um, I, I would say, you know, year one through five at the junior college level and then, uh, year six through eight and now starting year nine, it's, it's been the exact same. Uh, it's the, it, you know, you're looking forward to that day. Uh, all year. And so uh, for us, you know, we, we have a new team. Uh, we've got 10 new players and, and uh, we were really fortunate to take a foreign tour this summer. We took our team to Panama. Uh, we had an, you know, an excellent experience down there. Not only were we successful and won all three games, but uh, it, it was a great usage of our time and, and uh, really allowed our team with so many new guys to, to come together and start to, uh, you know, expedite the the culture building and, and the relationships and the chemistry and camaraderie. So we felt like we're a little, a little ahead of where we've been maybe in the past, but, uh, uh yesterday was, was a great day. Uh, you know, really competed, um, you know, for, for the full two hours and, um, in terms of what our practice looked like, um, you know, really it was, it was a combination of things. Uh, I, I would say everything from, offensive stuff to defensive stuff to uh, special situation stuff, um, you know, breaking things down and, and doing some progression stuff on the defensive end. And then on the offensive end, um, you know, really just going over everything that we've put in until this point and just trying to get better and better at what we currently have in place and, and then playing, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about the, the, the longer practices is, uh, it allows us to play for a longer duration of time and and start to get better evaluations with different lineups and and uh, different personnel. Definitely. Um, let's talk about player development from your perspective. Yeah. What is your approach to player development, and what would an hour session look like with one of you guys at um at Idaho State? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. Um, you know, I think player developments. It's huge. 
uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to spend a lot of time with our guys, you know, with player development, uh, whether it's our, our guards uh, at some times or whether it's uh, our forwards and centers at another time. Uh, for me, you know, in season, it is really about, um, you know, fine tuning the, the current skill set and making sure that our players are playing at their highest level of confidence at all times. Um, in the off season, that's when I believe it's, it's most important to, you know, really uh, expand the bag, you know, as the guys would say, or, or expand the skill sets uh, that guys have, uh, you know, in the off season, you have more time for player development and, and therefore you have more time to, uh, you know, commit to, you know, adding new, you know, new moves and, and really spending the proper time on those new moves uh, to build the level of confidence for guys to be able to, to use those in games. We talk all the time, man. It's like, you know, you want, you know, game reps at game speed for game translation, right? If you're just, if you're, if you're going through the the motions and, and you're not, uh, you know, training at a, at a pace and at a speed that's going to allow you to have it directly transferable to the game. You're, in our opinion, you're, you're not setting yourself up for success. Um, so I would say, yeah, that's, you know, that's the current, um, you know, mindset that I have with, with the player development, skill development stuff in our session uh, to kind of, you know, finish the question that you had asked, it's going to vary. Uh, I do a lot of progression stuff with our guys, uh, but it depends on position. So, you know, if with our forwards and centers, you know, our fours are maybe working on different things than our fives and vice versa. Um, but my biggest thing, man, is, is I think in order for us to be our best, we have to find ways to continue to put our players in position to be successful. What I mean by that is playing to the strengths of each individual within our offense. Right. And so, you know, for example, if we have a guard that's really good um, in the ball screen, making sure that we get to certain parts of our motion offense with our swing offense uh, to get that guard in position to be able to utilize his strengths and, and, and play to uh, his strengths. If we have, you know, fours that are really good in the face up game and, and uh, some threes that have came off, you know, different flex screens and they're facing up, then I think, you know, we need to do a, continue to do a good job of putting those guys in position uh, to play to their strengths within our offense. Um, yeah, so I, I would say that's that. I, I don't want to give up too many nuggets in terms of what exactly we're working on, but I think, uh, you know, in season for us is really important to continue to drill home what they're going to use in games and how they're going to score within our offense uh, and then just keeping them as, as crisp and, and confident as possible. Yeah, no doubt, Coach. I definitely appreciate it, Jim. You were able to drop and share right there. Um, definitely you can't give everything away. You know what I mean? You <laughs> got to keep some things exclusive to you and your group. Um, I, I feel like you have a great basketball mind, and your day to be a head coach at the Division One level is coming sooner than later. And it's um, kind of an unwritten law to be prepared, to be as prepared as possible when that day comes. So um, could you just share with us, like, um, right now, what are, like, three of your non-negotiables and what would be your defensive philosophy right now as uh, Coach White, the head coach? Yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, first things first, you know, when taking over a program, and I was fortunate at the age of 28 to take over a program uh, at the junior college level, I think there's a lot of similarities uh, whenever you take over a program. So when my time's called, you know, it, it's going to be a, a culture based program that that's focused on the players. You know, I'm young enough at, at uh, 32 years old. Um, you know, my, my dad always told me I was an old soul. So, you know, I'm old in that regard. And, and if my dad was here, you know, my dad would be in his eighties. So I was raised from a different time, but uh, the, the truth is, as a player's coach, man, I, I'm young enough to be able to know what's going on with these kids and uh, being able to to relate with them and resonate. And, and uh, you know, life's thrown some different, you know, trials and tribulations and adversity uh, my way through my 32 years that 
I, I can relate with a lot of these dudes and a lot of different things that they're going through. And, and I think that's really helped with the relationships that I've been able to build throughout my career. Um, so I would say, you know, non-negotiables, like we'll, we'll never sacrifice our culture uh, for a player. Um, you know, our biggest thing is, is trying to make sure that at all times with our players, we get the right players on the bus, and the wrong players off the bus. Um, you know, it's really a, a you know, a, a saving quote, uh, but I believe in that wholeheartedly. And, and as you get the right players on the bus, you know, the, the trick is to, to really invest into your players, invest into your program, invest into your staff. And the more that you invest and the more that you pour into your program as a whole, the more you get out of it. So, uh, I, I think some people overcomplicate it. Um, that that's how I feel personally. Uh, it is you should be investing into your program at all times, whether it's, um, you know, financially, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, uh, whatever it is that you believe your program should stand on, you should be investing into your program at all times. That's good stuff, coach. Um, I definitely appreciate your time. And as we wrap up, um, how can people find you and follow you on social media so they can just connect with you and continue to, um, get some of the nuggets and be able to uh, flourish from some of the experience that you had in coaching. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I, I think, you know, I want to make sure that I share that I'm, you know, I'm an open book. Uh, if somebody reaches out to me, uh, I'm going to reach back out to them. Um, some people would perceive that as a waste of time for me, man. It's just the way that I am and the way that I approach the business. Um, I want to continue to pour back and, and uh, you know, give to the great game of basketball. That's been such a blessing to me. Um, if it wasn't for basketball, I wouldn't be, you know, where I'm at today, uh, in a position to, to inspire and influence and, and lead and motivate, uh, young men to become the best they can be on their academic and athletic journey. So, uh, please do, you know, find me, follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at coach white ISU. Um, and then you know, I'm on Instagram. I'm not near as good as at Instagram as I am Twitter, but, uh, you know, I, I try to continue to be better at that uh, for the people that are following the journey uh, on Instagram. So my name on Instagram is is coach underscore Joe underscore white underscore one. Uh, again, Twitter is at coach white ISU and Instagram is coach underscore Joe underscore white underscore one. I appreciate your time, Coach Little, and appreciate anyone who tunes in. You have an event coming up, maybe a birthday celebration, a wedding, baby shower, or just a get together with the family. Call 3D Party Rental. We bring the party to you. We offer quality comfort and reliable equipment at affordable prices. Visit our website at www.3dpartyrental.com to view our full inventory or call 410-803-6745 to speak with a rental associate.